Welcome to Mr. Latham's AP Macroeconomics. Today we're going to talk about the production possibilities curve or frontier, also called the PPC. What does it show? Well, first of all, it's a graph. You can see we have a graph set up here. It shows what can be produced, and it also illustrates the opportunity cost of what can be produced. It's a too good comparison, and it shows a point in time. Now, our first example, we're going to talk about an economy that only produces pizzas and calzones. We're going to show our opportunity cost here. Okay. And then we're going to label it. This is going to be pizza up here. Whoa. We're going to try that again. There we go. There's pizza. Calzone's down here. So we got pizza and calzone now. And you can see we can either make all pizza and no calzone, or we can make all calzone and no pizza, or we could pick somewhere in the middle. Okay? We're going to choose somewhere in the middle to start with. We're going to call this point A. And point A illustrates efficiency. In other words, at point A, we're efficient. We're on the curve. We're on the production possibilities curve. So we're operating somewhere on there, which means we're operating efficiently. Okay. Our next place would be inefficient. Well, inefficient is going to be anywhere inside this curve. We're going to label inside this curve, we're going to label right here, we're going to call this point B. Okay, then we're going to have point C, which we're going to refer to as impossible. In other words, you can't operate outside the curve. Okay, how can we illustrate this? Well, we can illustrate it by, let's, let's create a num uh, some numbers here. Well, we're going to say you can either make 10 pizzas or 10 calzones. Okay, makes sense. Pizza and calzone, bread, cheese, sauce, and that kind of stuff, some meat maybe or whatever. But they're pretty similar products, and so you can trade off a one-for-one -one relationship between a pizza and calzone. So if we decide to make 10 pizzas, we're going to make zero calzones. So we got 10 and zero. Alternatively, we could say... Well, you know what? I want five calzones. Okay. Well, there you go. You have five calzones. Unfortunately for you, you no longer have ten pizzas, do you? You look over here, and it turns out you can only get five pizzas. Well, what's your opportunity cost of producing five calzones? Well, I could have had 10 pizzas, now I only have five, so my opportunity cost is five. Let's say I want eight calzones. So there we have eight calzones. Now we only have two pizzas. Well, now our opportunity cost, we could have had 10. You know, we always start at the top again. Now we can only have two, so we could have had 10. Now we can only have two, so the opportunity cost, 10 minus 2, is 8 pizzas. In other words, the opportunity cost of producing calzones is pizzas. And likewise, if you wanted more pizzas, you're going to have to give up calzones. Okay, next thing we want to talk about is what kind of opportunity cost do we have? Well, in this case, you can see a straight line. We have constant, this is referred to as constant opportunity cost. Okay, why is it referred to as constant opportunity cost? Because we give up one pizza for one calzone. Even if we said, let's make this 20 calzones. Okay, we'll say the calzones are smaller. Okay. Well, it's still going to be constant opportunity cost because in each case, we give up one pizza here. So one pizza here for two calzones or 10 pizzas. If we give up all 10 pizzas, we get 20 calzones. 
But every time you want more calzones, every time you want two more calzones, you're going to have to give up one pizza. And likewise, if you want another pizza, you're going to have to give up two calzones. So there's no efficiency between pizza and calzone. They have the same opportunity cost. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about more generically is the production possibilities cost Whoops, um, for the whole economy. So in our case, let's look at the U.S. economy. Well, the U.S. economy, we have two things we can make. We can make capital goods. Okay, so we're drawing another graph. This one's going to have capital goods, or we can have consumer goods. Okay, in this case, when we draw our opportunity cost, they're not going to be constant. This is referred to as increasing opportunity cost. Okay, increasing opportunity cost, increasing opportunity cost, which means that some goods are better off or better for making capital goods. That would be uh, engineers would really be good at making capital goods, machinery, you know, highly sophisticated things. Whereas consumer goods, things, consumer goods and includes and services, restaurants and things like that, well, you can use minimum wage workers to produce more consumer goods. And so they have, they have different skill sets. So if you want to make more of either one, you're not going to be as efficient, which means your opportunity cost is going to increase as you try to go, make more of either one over a time period. You can initially make capital goods. For instance, you could make this much capital goods. So you've gone all the way up to here. Okay, you've made that much capital goods and you've given up some consumer goods. Okay, so you're back to here. Okay, if you want to keep continuing and make just a little bit more capital goods, you're going to end up giving a lot more consumer goods. You know, let's say we go right to here. Well, we got just got a little bit more capital goods, but we gave up a lot of consumer goods. So there we're showing capital goods and consumer goods, and they have increasing opportunity cost. Now, we're still going to have uh, some, some similar descriptions here, but they change a little bit. Now, instead of being inefficient, let's take this point right here. Instead of calling that inefficient, we'll now call that a recession. Okay, and so we'll make that point B. That's a recession. Okay, and here, whoops, uh-oh. Let's go back there. Here's point, we'll have here's point A. And once again, once again, Kind of missed the dot here. Let me try that again. Okay, I got it. Okay. That's full production, productivity and full employment. In other words, all our people are working and they're using their resources efficiently. And then we still have impossible here. And so impossible here, we'll call that point C. We can't get there, okay? Because our current resources allow us to get along the curve here, but they don't allow us to exceed anywhere on the curve, so point C is impossible. Okay, well, that's today. Let's say we have several years from now. Well, is that con going to continue to be impossible? Well, the answer to that is no, because of growth. Okay, and growth is a huge important thing on the C, on the AP macro exam. Well, how can we grow? In this case, how can we get to our point C, which was previously impossible? Well, once again, this was a fixed point in time, but now we're saying, well, you know what? It's no longer fixed. We're going to allow time to pass. So we're going to look at the longer term, and we're going to say, can we gr grow 
this particular production possibilities curve? And the answer is yes. How can we grow it? Well, how do we grow our own economy? Well, we grow our economy with an increase in resources. In other words, for instance, right now we're finding more oil and gas through technologies like hydraulic fracturing and, and other technologies. We also are being becoming more efficient through uses of technology. Technology is making all of us more efficient, doing more things. You know, I'm recording this right now, and I couldn't have done that, say, five or ten years ago. And then third item is investment in capital. In, in economics, capital is referred to as goods that help make other goods. In this case, I bought a Mimeo and a projector and, some, and a computer and stuff like that. Those are all capital investments, which has allowed me to actually do this video. So all of these things, resources, technology, and investment in capital, if we get more of that, we can grow our production possibilities curve that was, even though it's fixed in the short run, it's not fixed in the long front run. So to summarize here, what we talked about was the production possibilities curve shows us what can we do as an economy or, you know, you could do it for just any two goods, but it shows you that there's opportunity cost. In other words, you're going to have to trade one thing for the other. If you produce more of one thing, you're going to produce less of the other. It shows you how much you can produce. It shows you you can be inefficient. You can be in here, which means you're not you're not fully employed or you're not fully productive. Okay. It also illustrates growth. That it in the long run, if you're going to get out to one of these impossible scenarios, you're going to have to have growth through increased resources, increased technology, or increased investments in capital. So we'll talk about those more in the near future. So that's it for this lesson. See you tomorrow.